colder day on the whole, I think, for many places on Thursday, just scraping the double figures in the far southwest. Otherwise, we're looking at four to eight degrees mainly across most of the country. And it's going to have a colder feel there into northern and eastern parts of the country as the cold front clears through later Thursday. But clearing skies and that means uh, frost forming across the north and east by Friday morning and a widespread frost indeed on Friday night into Saturday morning but despite the chilly start there'll be plenty more sun. So it's a Friday night, it's full moon, but it's clear skies. That means one thing, astrophotography. So yeah, um, it's been a pretty testing couple of days since I got my dedicated astronomy camera and attempted first light. I would say that tonight is the real proper first light. Um, I didn't quite realize how different a shooting with a dedicated astronomy camera would be compared to a DSLR. I knew that it had cooling and that kind of thing, but yeah, I didn't realize that focusing would be a lot different in APT. And one of the reasons why is because I didn't realize that you had to bin four by four and stretch the histogram to be able to see a bright star. So once I'd established that, I was able to focus smoothly and also I was getting really severe star elongation in the corners and to be honest, I haven't been really happy with my guiding for quite a while. So I just decided to uninstall PHD2, reinstall the latest version and then calibrate everything. So my mount, guide scope settings, guide cam settings in PHD2. Chose a guide star near the celestial equator because if you're pulse guiding with EQ mod, then that's what you should do. And then you can just simply choose any star wherever you're imaging after you've calibrated that once. It does an auto calibration on the next star wherever you're imaging. So you don't have to go through the calibration step each time. So that's a bit of a, a time saver. So that's good. Um, yeah, I'll show you what the guiding looks like and how everything's set up in APT. So yeah, the, uh, the star's looking okay. Uh, guiding, um, yeah, that's, uh, that's good as well. Uh, I've got a good guide star. So what you want to aim for with uh, your guiding star is something with what, uh, a star with a pointed peak, which as you can see here, um, that's quite a pointed peak. You don't want to have it where it's constantly flat like it just was then. So yeah, pointed peak is nice. Um, in any case, it's the the stars that matter, you know, it's the results that are coming through and the subs. So uh, yeah, I just have it set to three seconds. And in PHD2, if you click on the uh, icon here, the brain icon, um, when I was recalibrating, I just set the, um, the mount, uh, automatic mount speed, so I let PHD D2 determine the calibration step from my HEQ5, uh, the focal length for the guide scope 206, and uh, yeah, the camera pixel size is 3.75. Um, so it was just really a case of uh, focusing my guide cam and doing the recalibration on a uh, southern star. So 180, 180 second subs, one by one, gain 100, minus 10, and double click and zoom in. Stars look okay. Um, it looks green because it's stretched with a histogram. So what I was talking about earlier is, if you click on the tools and histograms here, 
you've got this auto stretch left, which when I was uh, focusing for the first time, I didn't realize that you had to click on that button and then you can see these uh, all these stars, because if you clear this, that's what you've got. And that's what I was trying to focus with. I couldn't work out why I couldn't see any uh, diffraction spikes and yeah. <laughs> magic button and yeah they uh, they come to life so I just thought I'd show you the uh, what it looks like in Stellarium the Sol Nebula so this is the so this is the sort of orientation that I'm imaging with um, this is how I've rotated my camera which is sort of a 90 degree angle and it just fits better like this because if it's uh, set at the normal sort of um, rotation it doesn't really fit it looks a bit more like that so yeah how I've got it is more like this so I just think that's a better sort of composition and uh, yeah um, it's 20 to 2 in the morning and it's at 28 degrees altitude so I think I've got until about well two half two three o'clock but uh, about then it'll be 25 degrees and I don't really want to be sort of imaging um, when it's that low in the sky uh, because of the uh, the atmospheric the atmospherics so it's about three in the morning and I'm tired, but I've got seven hours on this target so far. So I've gone as long as I can for it. And we're probably gonna get clouds tomorrow. So yeah, uh, the target that I'm imaging tonight is the Sol Nebula. It's in the constellation Cassiopeia and it's right next to the Heart Nebula. So if you've got a wide field refractor or a, a short focal length lens, it's ideal for capturing both at the same time. So something that I've never done before, but I've also never imaged the Sol Nebula in one shot. So really looking forward to what the uh, image looks like and it's first light with my first uh, dedicated astronomy camera. So yeah, really excited. The moon isn't helping, it's about full, but you know, you've got to take these clear nights when you can get them. So the Sol Nebula is about 6,000 light years from Earth and and it's just a fantastic looking emission nebula. So yeah, it's always, uh, it's, it's been a target that I've been looking forward to imaging for a few years. And uh, I'm really, uh, yeah, I'm really happy to uh, have chosen it for my first target with the 2600 MC Pro. So yeah, I'm looking forward to some sleep, but yeah, these nights are worth it. When you see that image at the end of them, that's what it's all about.